Jordan Travis is talking championships. Noel Nation, that's got to sound good, and it sounds legit for the first time in forever. Good stuff. Edition number 196 here at the Voice of College Football, Florida State Seminoles Live, and it only happens because of these two. Jason Parker, NBC6, right next to me, and Logan Robinson, of course, Noel Game Day. Guys, appreciate you being here. Party for the 200th episode? I feel like that's what we should discuss. We'll discuss off cam, obviously, but I actually want to get Logan. If you want to bring the cake, I'll bring the sandwiches. We can do something like that. Yep. Sounds good to me. Okay. We'll party it up in a few weeks. Absolutely. February. Before we get into, obviously, we're going to talk about several things as the offseason has hit. I and I think Logan, we want to obviously extend our heartfelt condolences to Mark. Mark, obviously, the passing of his mother last week. 92 strong years on this earth. It's, it's a hell of a run for, for, for Mama. Ma, Mama Rogers, the voice of college ball. We're going to call her that there on that one. So from us, and I know, obviously, anyone you do with, any, you know, the Miami shows, Oakland shows, Ohio State shows, anyone else you do a show with knows what she meant to you. But from us, we extend our love, our condolences to you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Logan. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'll just briefly say, as I said to Jason before we started to record here, um, yeah, just a very, as you can imagine, very emotional weekend and not just all sad emotions, but celebrating her life, had a lot of family in town, a lot of friends uh, came up to see me. And um, so a lot of celebration celebration there too celebrating her life she had a great run as jason said so uh we will dearly miss her but uh know that she is much better off right now me too good god Absolutely. almost 93 three weeks away you know what we're gonna get we're gonna count 93 we're gonna give her 93. that is crazy she put it on. I'll give her 93 i know i'm trying to get the number what the hell 92 good god Is it buffering? Is it buffering for me, or is it just on my end? I don't know. It kind of has Jason yeah, cutting out a little a bit, bit or is that just me? Going. I think we've got a bit of a lag going. I think your Wi-Fi. I don't know what to do about house. that. Your Wi-Fi is not working, man. Come on. Uh, now, now I think it's a little Mark. Mark sounds good to me. I think Jason. I don't know what's going on down there in Miami. You get certain. I guess you take him away from down there, and then he takes the Wi-Fi away from you, and it comes up to Tallahassee like that. I think your Wi-Fi. Tallahassee with all those trees and stuff. My my Comcast Wi-Fi is phenomenal. Xfinity, Comcast, you know, we get paid on on Friday, so I think Comcast does <laughs> Also, while we, are, while we are giving out condolences, we've got condolences to our basketball team. Miami finally broke their mm. losing streak to us. Last time Miami beat us, I was married, so shout out. Give them a little credit. They almost beat us in basketball as much as we beat them in football. So, so I guess a, a, a melancholy muzzle talk to the Canes for what they did to us. Yep. Congratulations to them. I kind of forgot basketball was going on this year until my dad texted and said this is probably the this was the first and probably last game he'll watch this year. So it just is what it is that things are turning here in Tallahassee, and it seems like it's headed in the direction of football. We know softball and the women's sports are always going to provide excellence on their side of things, but. It always goes in turns. When basketball is good, football doesn't seem to be on the right track. But now basketball isn't so great. And Florida State ended the season with a 10-win year. So we're heading the right direction for a football guy over here, in my at least. Well, since we are now back to being a football school, now that we are back to being a 10-win program, obviously next Wednesday, February 1st, is what is what used to be a big day, National Signing Day. Now, obviously, now everyone tends to lean towards the more the early signing day in December. But next one is the, the national signing day period. My question to you, Logan, Florida State obviously had a big signing day back in February, big in the transfer portal, bringing in a bunch of guys coming in. Will Florida State get anyone? Next? Florida State just kind of kind of maybe set this one up. I don't think it will be as wild, definitely, now that we have early sign day, but this one might have a commitment coming in for Florida State, um, and it might be even before we get to that date. I'm keeping an eye on Tawaski Abrams. He is a four-star wide receiver. 
um, out of Fort Myers, Florida, in that 2024 class, a very, very speedy wide receiver. Um, he had a two-day uh, trip over the weekend. Our guy Dustin was there whenever he came in to Tallahassee. And out of the vibe and things that he's hearing, Dustin uh, put it in our Discord Jason into the discord. Uh, he mentioned that, you know, Florida state, LSU, South Carolina, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Penn state, Texas A&M, and even fam you uh, are in his top eight, but right now feels pretty strongly in Florida state's favor with Ron Dugan's and Mike Norvell's offense. It attracts him quite a bit. That's a guy that I'd probably keep an eye on heading into um, this next, this 2024 class. Uh, there might be some other ones that, that jump up, we're just waiting for a few more interviews to kind of get a feel for who might end up maybe being a surprise pick to pick, go, you know, go in FSU's favor. But uh, one that we're keeping a close eye on, not that it would affect this 2023 class, but a 2024 really speedy wide receiver from down South is Tawas, uh, Tawaski Abrams. Really interesting name too. I like it, but uh, you know, Florida State being able to show what they can do with players. You know, we had a lot of newcomer interviews this week. We'll have some more tomorrow morning. But something that I got from Vendravius Jacobs, Florida State's uh, wide receiver that is a freshman coming in early in Lee, He said, you know, one thing that attracted him picking Florida State was the variety and different ways you were going to be able to eat. He said, in quote, eat on the offense and you know, Florida State being able to do that, what a lot of their playmakers this year is what is starting to attract these playmakers. And with it, with with Abrams comes speed. And, and that's something that Florida State certainly, I would say, lacks in their offense. I w couldn't really name someone that I'm like, oh, my goodness, if he has open space, he's bye bye. And as Mark, you know, and Jason in college football, that can be the change of a game and a switch like that. So. Uh, I, I do feel like Florida State's in a good spot here from what my guy Dustin is telling me, and that's someone to keep a very close eye on for a potential pop really soon. Um, so we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's uh, can be a game changer in one blink of an eye, or if it's not, it might be affecting all the other plays because there's so much focus on the defense going that way that it opens up other things and you're able to do so much more because you've got that one guy that draws that kind of attention. Uh, this uh, Tawaski Abrams, yes, Logan said 5'11", 175, top 300 player in the composite, top 45 wide receiver in the composite, top 36 uh, is his ranking in the Sunshine State. Yeah, one player I will say that you will not have going into this next year, you know, Ontario Wilson, Pokey, uh, he was a guy that, was explosive and had the speed. And, you know, we saw that last year. We saw what he did against LSU. Um, and we saw what he was able to do against a couple of other teams throughout the season. And that changed the game for Florida State in a lot of ways and was able to put points on the board just because of, of him being open and, you know, JT kind of, you know, getting better with that deep ball, connecting well. And, you know, you don't have Ontario Wilson anymore. I would say the closest price speed wise would be Ja'Kai Douglas, who's going to be returning for Florida State. Uh, was originally at the running back position, kind of mix of a hybrid now, specifically at wide receiver. But, you know, Florida State trying to look for some speed here because they've got the size now. That's something that they don't have to worry about as much anymore. But some speed to break the top off, you know, on a, on a defense, you know, that's something Florida State can look to do to add on to their arsenal moving forward. But this is a 2024 guy who won, won an effect this year's class coming in. I, you know, Vendravius Jacobs is – a sleeper wide receiver that's coming into Florida state this year. He's already enrolled. Now he's a guy that's going to have to put on a little bit of size, but he's also got the advantage of being elusive. And I think Abrams is kind of in that same realm a little bit, same kind of size, 175 height around the same, you know, nothing too, too wild measurements wise, but you know, route running Chris, kind of like how Kenny Shaw was who a lot of FSU fans in the comments know very well, you know, don't have to be the biggest guy to change the game and you know abrams and javis jacobs you know i kind of kind of see what florida state's trying to add in their in their unit moving forward for the next couple of years so that's a guy that i'd keep an eye on uh to potentially be the next fsu commit and definitely in that 2024 class to add on to already one of the most talented in the country 
Um, there's a lot to like. The 2023 class for a moment, looking at 24 sevens list of the top recruits in the state of Florida, using that as a barometer, 96 of the top 100 have already signed. So there's only four mm-hmm. guys who possibly sign next week. Has the February date become, in your opinion, obsolete? I uh, mean, are we just, should we just basically, I, I mean, obviously it's not going to go away because you're going to have people who will occasionally sign in the spring. But for the most part, I feel like December has replaced it as the most important date for colleges. Yeah, it does feel that way. It, it certainly does. Getting it getting out of the way and then you have the chances to have it early enrolling. I think by the time in two or three years, 99% of every player will be early enrolling because there's so much high school to college to college is getting so much more. There's just so many different opportunities to figure out ways academically to make it happen. And players want to get onto the field as soon as possible. And for that to happen, they need to be early enrollees. And so I think what that added on and also Mike Norvell and the staff doing a lot better than they have in the past with making sure guys are sealed and dealed and signed and get them all done, get it all over with. Cause the same, the thing when happened with KJ Sampson, Florida state's freshman defensive lineman who won't be an early enrollee, but he has signed and he will be at Florida state. There was a lot of schools at the end really trying to get him to wave off and not sign on early signing day, but Florida state was able to push and push and push and get that concrete that he would be a Florida state Seminole. And that's something Florida state on their side has done, I think a better job on, I think they can, they'll continue to try to do that. But overall between in college football, I think, you know, early signing day is the day, um, and for Florida State in particular, they've got to continue this trend after this last year. Like you said, 96%, raise that up to 98 Make sure you can, if everything works out for it, family-wise, academics-wise, to the high school, to the college side of things, if they can get that done, get them here as soon as possible and put away having to continue to recruit and compete with other colleges across the country for a couple more months. What's interesting about early signing period, though, is we're looking at about Four years would be my guess that we've had an early signing period. And Jason, as you just said, immediately it became the signing period. It became like an 80%. And then the next year was a little bit higher and a little bit higher. And now, you know, as you mentioned, 96 at the top 100 players. However, what couldn't be foreseen at that point was the transfer portal. And I've heard a few coaches, both head coaches and assistant coaches, just say December's insane. We're wrapping up a season. Most of us have to prepare a team for postseason. We're getting early enrollees on campus that are able to participate in bowl practices. We're recruiting for National Signing Day, December 15th, roughly. Mm-hmm. And, and we got the transfer portal to deal with. And something's got to give here. <laughs> like, we're just slammed beyond belief. And I, and I think it goes to – well, go ahead, Jason, if no, you want to. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Well, down here, we had a guy, Ruben Bain, who was the guy who had you know, committed up to Miami, signed with the University of Miami. It was down to Miami and Florida State, but he was a guy who was in that same boat and said, listen, my team's about to play for a championship. Let me make my announcement now so that I can focus on that. For me, and I mean, and Logan's younger than me. Both of us played high school football. Neither one of us was going to get recruited to hmm. Bama or Georgia or Florida State or whatnot. If I were in that position, I don't know how I would react because, you know, 39-year-old Jason can look at things one way, but 18-year-old Jason, you know, I don't know how I would have acted. I, how I would have acted a fool come um, if, if I was being recruited by schools like a Florida State or a Georgia or an Alabama. I mean, Logan, what do you think about mm-hmm. that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, going back to what we were talking about, in order for Florida State to have success, Florida State has been, we can say, Mike Norvell, you could say, arguably – one of, if not the best, at what he's been able to do in the transfer portal as, as a coach right now in college football and just the success that has shown onto the field and how that's translated. It's been phenomenal to see. One big key is adding on off-field coaching staff. We had on general manager last week at, last week with Derek Ray, and he takes care of that stuff. Like you were just saying there, Mark, he, he takes care of that along with people around him. There's you know multiple handfuls of people that – Make sure we're looking at the transfer transfer portal every day. We're making a list of what you know, coach wants us to 
needs where are our needs met in the transfer portal what about on the high school side of things who's reaching out what are our recruiting visits looking like are they accommodating the family members are they accommodating you know transfers are different than a 17 year old coming for recruit you know for transfers a little bit different you want to put jared verse probably uh you know with a guy like you know kyle morlock who is a who's coming from a smaller school with different kind of competition so jared verse can give him a good resemblance of what it's going to look like if you're coming to florida state what's the difference in competition there so that's something that mike norvell and then also michael alford florida state's athletic director have gone on the same page about of adding on a good amount of staff off-field coaching off-field staff to handle a lot of these you know, maybe not the most fun things, but you got to have it done or you're going to be left in the dust type of thing. And like, you got to have a, a good unit to t handle this kind of stuff. And Derek Ray is Florida state's general manager, and they're trying to build a NFL type organization on the college level. And, you know, Derek told us straight up, you look at Alabama, what Nick Saban was doing. He kind of set the standard for that or set the mark for what, created them to be so successful in a lot of different ways but now with the transfer portal like you're saying mark you've got to take care of that recruiting you also got to work on retention too i think that's something that we're starting to kind of now that's becoming really more important is retention keeping players on your team as much as you can and that goes to maybe nil it comes to other different opportunities yada 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 can you keep that player for another season and florida state has been able to you know do that and the nil collect was like the battles and announcing a lot of these guys coming back giving them opportunities um you know that's going to be a big topic for probably the next year or two is retention how long can you keep these guys with the program um and and you know there are some you're, you're just not going to have like treshawn ward he, he he's got to go find a better opportunity and he's going to do that at his, at his next stop. And there's going to be a few other guys too, that will do the same like Malik McLean going to Penn state. They need wide receivers. He, he's going to go and start for them. There's some guys that will do that, but you know, retention, like bringing back Fabian love it, obviously Jordan Travis, Trey Benson. I mean, it, it just it pays dividends for having a, a coaching or not a coaching staff, but an off the field staff and helping do all that, taking care of all that kind of crap. And as it says on the banner there, and now fully approved by one Jason Parker, join the Noel Game Day uh, Discord. Mm. Talk it's, Noel's it's all now the approved. time. So the 2023 Jason Parker allows the the promotion of such things. I don't know if approved. I'm just tolerating it. I guess it's it's like Logan. Mm. Like, it was the first year we didn't really approve of him, but by 2020, we oh yeah, we started to warm up. <laughs> Oh, now, now, yeah. now we're, we're in 23. I can sit like my little brother. So, yeah, I get where it comes yeah. from. Maybe I love that. Year. No, 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 you will approve. We're tolerating. The we didn't the approve of Logan. You get to rope me into that, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, just kept asking yeah. him back. Didn't approve of him. That. Just tolerated him. Yeah. Mark gets dragged into yes. him. I love it. <laughs> uh, are we getting close to the New Jersey numbers or weights yet? What are we doing? What are we doing? No. Wait till mm. next week for that. We, mm. we, we, we got time. We got, uh, I know you want weights and and, and everything and all that. Let's wait. Let's wait. We've got stuff to talk about now. In fact, I know Mark mentioned this a little bit. Our, our quarterback said something a little bit interesting. Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Well, he's shooting for the stars. You know, he's telling it like it is in regards to he's got this team in a position, this offense in a position to be – shooting for the elite of college football. And and that's what people are starting to expect. And he just laid it out there with pro football focus this week to say, you know, this is why I'm here. This is what we're gunning for. You know, I came here to win a national championship, probably didn't feel in, in, a, and this is a compliment on my part, didn't feel comfortable or in the right position to be throwing out those kind of terms, because when you're winning five games, you're mm -hmm. not in that position, but, now he is, and uh, the Heisman Trophy talk was thrown at him, and I'm sure that's just beginning. We're going to hear that from now until the LSU game, uh, the Heisman Trophy talk. And, and as any good leader, he acknowledged that. That's okay. That would be great, but that's not the focus. That's not why we're here. That's not the goal. It's about team, and it's about championships. 
what I like about what Jordan is saying here is Jordan Travis is somebody who rooting for Florida State. Now, obviously, his brother played baseball at Florida State when he was a child in early te- in his early teenage years. So he's somebody who grew up wanting to be a Seminole. He's like, you know, like we a little bit. I grew up a Florida State fan as a child. Logan was a Florida State fan. We've wanted Florida State to succeed. So I think that's where you're getting with Jordan is somebody who 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 wants is happy Florida State's back but wants Florida State to succeed. And I, I think you mentioned a little bit. The way last season ended, the way it ended with the six straight wins, with Travis throwing the ball, I mean, we're talking about 400 games against an Oklahoma team. That's against a name program. It's not like mm-hmm. he's beating up on paying ACC teams. He's beating up on yeah. Right. He's beating up on Oklahoma. He's beating up on Florida. He's beating up on Miami. You know, he, you know, he beat up two early in the season. He's got some name wins here. I, I, I want Florida State to be in the national championship competition this coming season. I think it would be a lot for Florida State to get there. I think Florida State will be in the in the conversation for an ACC title. I don't know as much right now about the national title. We'll see as the season goes on. But you can get into this a little bit more with me. When it comes to the Heisman Trophy, I think he is in the serious conversation because you look at it. Look at who the finalists were last year. Obviously, Caleb Williams, the quarterback for USC, won the title. He is returning for what will be his third season of college football. But C.J. Stroud from Ohio State, he's gone. He's heading to the NFL. Bryce from Alabama is heading to the NFL. Stetson Bett, the five-year-old from Georgia, it seems like he's 35. He's heading to the NFL at this rate. Other than, than Caleb Williams, who, who will be coming back for another year, who are some of the other guys? Uh, Drake May, maybe, at North Carolina. Yeah. Obviously, you'll have the big-name programs like Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia may send somebody. You may have Jay Daniels at LSU. I think that game, that Florida State game, is going to be the winner of that game. Could vault into the early front runner after Week One, but I mean, I think Jordan is a serious right now. As we're doing the show on January twenty fifth, barring injury, barring somebody, you know, coming out big in the spring, coming out big in the summer. I, I think he's early, in the early conversation to be in New York. I'm just. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he definitely should be in the conversation. There's a reason why there's a return, and I like how he's saying, you know, I'm came, coming back for a national championship, and I think he definitely, you know, that's the focus. Now, there's no way he was able to say that last off season, and uh, there, there's just no way. Now I think there's a lot of built-up confidence, and I'll tell you what, that three-game losing stretch, especially that Louisville game, might have been the best thing that ever happened to Jordan Travis. I've just seen a switch happen with him, definitely at practices, I mean, he, he came pissed off, and even for Coach Norvell to open up and tell us that, yeah, we something did switch with him, and he does kind of look like he's ticked off at practice, but he's playing really well, and the focus there really turned into him becoming a leader, calling guys out, having a lot of accountability. That's something Jordan Travis wasn't doing earlier on in the season. He wasn't doing that in game prep for the LSU. He wasn't doing that before the Duquesne game. There was definitely more, of, more hands-on with some of the other guys, and, and maybe in the quarterback room, and you know, helping out the wide receivers and certain routes and yada, 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 and having some good communication. But things switch to where he is, you know, getting kind of fiery at practices and competing and getting a little chippy with the defensive side of the ball. He's making sure that guys are running the right routes. And if you're not running the right routes, he's going to let you know. That's something that I think really switched in the middle of the season when they went through that losing game stretch. And, I'm, you know, this team is really ticked off that they went, and lost those games because they truly think that they hurt themselves. They did this to themselves to not making a run to the college football playoff. They are, they are so mad. And the coaching staff too, you can hear, usually hear it's like coach speak. If we, you know, we kind of hurt ourselves, we lost all this kind of scene, but to see that the players really, every one of them, no matter if you're a wide receiver, you're a defensive lineman, they all have that same kind of lingo. And they said it after the season too, after that Oklahoma game, they said, you know, Jared Verse is talking about that, they should have fixed a lot of things. And Trayshawn Ward is even saying that too. Now that, you know, he's transferred, but he was saying, you know, there's a lot of things to where we screwed ourselves and hurt ourselves and not putting ourselves in the right position to win these games. And we should have been in that conversation to make it to a playoff or, you know, compete for an ACC championship. And I'm just wondering now though, the biggest question to us is, you know, Norvell came into a program that, 
wasn't winning, it had a lot of work to do, and there wasn't a lot of confidence built. Now that there is confidence built, along comes pressure. And I'm wondering if this team is mature enough to be able to have the pressure on their shoulders because it is going to be enormous once they go down to Orlando. It's going to be a lot different than going to the damn cheese at bowl against Oklahoma. I'm sorry. It, it, LSU and Brian Kelly is going to bring it for his first, you know, first, I wouldn't say his first year, but his, this is like, it's all out like you got to go win these kind of games if you're going to be going and coaching for LSU. Like you got to win that. Um, and, you know, that that starts off a huge campaign for both teams. And I'm just wondering the pressure, what Mike Norvell's different type of mentality will be. I don't think much will change, but I don't want to, I don't think FSU fans, they don't want to see an over, I don't know, I don't want to say cocky, but I don't want to see too much confidence to where you're going out and you're overestimating or you're underestimating your opponents. And I think that's something, at least from Mike Norvell, I want to see him do because he's shown us a lot. He's shown us the build. He showed us the climb. Now, how do you sustain it with players that are still hungry? I would say. I think there was some skepticism last year. Obviously we came into that game, went over to Kane, the zero game. We, we go out there, we, we hold on to get the win over LSU. And I think there were a lot of people who were still skeptical saying, yeah, but, and and then once we had that three game, losing we'll people thought, is that the real Florida State? I think, and I will come out on record saying this, that LSU game is the most important game for Florida State football in years. Because if we come out there, be, I think I think both teams will be in the top 10, both teams coming off a 10 win season. Big convincing wins in their bowl games. Obviously, LSU blowing up Purdue in their bowl game. And I think I think the winner, the, if Florida State can win that game, national TV top ten win over an LSU team over an SEC West champion last year, that is going to to skyrocket things for the Florida State team. Versus if you come out there and lay an egg, that's where my concern is. But I will ask you this: if people hit the like button. <laughs> become a yeah if you hit the like button then 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 yeah jordan travis has a really strong chance of being a uh heisman finalist and we'll look back on january 25th and clip this show and we'll sound like wizards and hopefully we'll get some more viewers onto the show heading into 2024 which could be a, a really fun year too but yeah the i definitely smack that like button make sure you hit subscribe too Make sure you're hanging out with us every Wednesday because uh, we've got a lot. Uh, pretty hectic offseason, definitely once spring begins. And we got some early enrollees starting to arrive, including transfers like Jaheim Bell, Kyle Morlock. You know, um, I, I just really have liked the newcomers and their interviews, the way that they seems like they've already been at FSU for a while, just the way that they're speaking. And they've kind of understood Mike Norvell's dialect and how he – runs the program. Whereas I think when, and it makes sense when minor L first arrived, there was a few players out there that wanted nothing to do with what the hell he was doing. Some of these workouts and things and tour of duty is no joke. And a lot of these players, including transfers and, you know, there's can't name some of the names, but some of the biggest stars for Florida state this, this last season were some of those players that took a good while to get used to what is ran at practices and workouts, but just to see some of these freshmen coming in, the transfers, understanding they're coming into a program where they uh, they already kind of get a feel for what Mike Norvell, what you're going to go, what you're going to put your body through, what you're about to do, and the way that he holds his academics very strongly, the way you hold yourself in public, school. You know, there's a lot of things that you know, has taken a little while to build there and build that kind of ethic in that locker room to where now you're allowing now, now you get the arrival from guys that have only been here for a few weeks and they're speaking like some of the veterans that have been on the team for, for two or three years, just having that kind of mentality, I think is just huge for some of these newcomers coming into where a couple of years ago that had to be built. So I think Florida state is on a, on a good speed here for uh, the early enrollee class. And we'll hear, we'll, we'll hear from, a few of them tomorrow, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been, it's been different. I will say it's a different than what I was hearing last year on, on some of these, on the new guys that have arrived. 
Definitely a good point about uh, the rise. There's a difference between the rise from mediocrity to a certain level. So Florida State's basically gone from five win status to 10 win status. And generally, you know, five and six win status in that range over the past four to five seasons to this big 10 win season. And when you're making that jump, specifically in the ACC, you're starting to beat the teams that you're supposed to beat. You're now beating Louisville and you're now beating fill in the blank in, in your division and on the schedule. Okay. To go from nine regular season wins to 11, those next two are then in a lot of ways, more substantial and a difficult, more difficult climb than knocking off those first five or six, because those there's just a mishmash in the ACC and in most conferences between the garbage at the bottom and the elite at the top where, you know, it's a play here and a play there. It's, it's, you know, a coaching decision here and there that separate five and seven, seven and five, eight and four, six and six, just that middle uh, layer. And Florida state has obviously been able to eclipse those schools. And now it's, it's pretty much Clemson. So from an emotional and psychological standpoint, I'm totally on board with Jason in regards to that LSU game being the most important of the season and the momentum of, okay, national stage, huge game. LSU is supposed to be really good this year. Where does this Florida State team stand? Mathematically and logistically, the game is obviously Clemson. That's the game that has to be won most likely. Um, although with this new format, of course, you can still lose to Clemson, get the rematch in the championship game. Uh, but in terms of conference standings, obviously Clemson's the team. The biggest, given we've talked about this, we've been doing this show since the 2019 season, 2019, 2020, 2021. It was always the stupid losses. We always said, hey, hmm. when I said Florida State would go 8-4, it was, what is the stupid loss going to be? Was it going to be Louisville? Was it going to be... Georgia Tech, the game where you sit there at the end of the year and go, how the hell did we lose to this team? You know, am I happy we lost three games? No, absolutely not. We'll at least say, okay, Wake Forest was a ranked team at the time. NC State was a ranked team at the time. Clemson was a ranked team at the time. Yes, we won the games we were supposed to We beat Miami. We beat Florida. We beat, you know, Louisville on the road. We beat Georgia Tech. We beat Syracuse. We beat the teams we were supposed to team. Now what's going on this season is going to be winning those games. LSU will be a ranked team. Clemson will be a ranked team. And honestly, looking at our schedule, and we're going to talk about the schedule in a moment, but other than LSU and Clemson, judging by the way the teams ended last season, there really may not be many other ranked teams, at least at the start of the season, teams who will be ranked or say will play. Because you look at our ACC schedule. You look at our non-conference schedule. It's LSU, Southern Miss, North Alabama, who had one win all last season in the FCS level, and Florida, who finished with a 6 and seven. So LSU seems to be the only team out of that group that beat. ACC play, as, as Mark pulls up the schedule, shout out to our friends at bschedules.com. But you, if you scroll down, you know, Boston College, it will not be a ranked team. Coming in, Clemson will be ranked. Looking at the rest of the schedule, you have Miami, who I, unless you're talking about 20 years ago, I don't see how Miami's a ranked team. Syracuse, they see a bowl loss. Wake Forest. Unless they played actually somebody, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Wake Forest finished season bowl at the end of the year, 7 6. Maybe Duke. Duke maybe might start in the 20 to 25 range. Virginia Tech was god awful last season. Pitt won a bowl game. So maybe you would say Clemson, LSU, ranked Duke and Pitt, maybe. Will, will turn out differently as the season goes on. You know, Florida will probably have ranked at some point. Maybe Virginia Tech. Maybe Miami does get better and how the schedule plays out. But I think, I think that's where Florida State's going to be is that taking advantage of those games, in that ranked win over LSU. If they go up and, and get a – what would probably be an upset win, Clemson, I think, will still be a favorite for us in that game. But there aren't going to be many chances to get a marquee win. So it's avoiding that letdown. To the schedule, obviously next Monday the schedule has come out. Florida knows that their first two games of the season will be 
non-conference with LSU on Sunday, September 3rd. The home opener will be on September 3rd, Southern Miss. The way the schedule plays out, Logan, if you look at it, week three, September 16th, the only two teams that have an open spot are Austin and Clemson, whom we both will be playing on the road in both of those games. Week four, it's Boston College, Clemson, Wake Forest, and Pitt. Which just looking at it real quick means that our first week games will be on the road. So I asked Logan, I say this before I have to help, do you want to start the season with Boston, start the ACC season with Boston College? Or do you just say, F it, let's start with Clemson? I think I would, I would give myself, and depending on, I mean, that, that would be damn early. Uh, I would probably, I would definitely want to start off with, with most likely Boston College. I mean, you're also you're going to start off the season with good competition, no matter what, because you're going to be facing LSU down in Orlando. Um, but for a road game to get a good true test at that, get everything aligned, get your ducks in order for your first away game. I'd rather do that against Boston to get you a warm up for a potential before you have to face a Clemson or something like that of that magnitude. Um, definitely going up to Death Valley. Uh, but yeah, I would, I would go Boston college. I think for wake forest side of things, I think Duke is going to be more of a dang threat than maybe West uh, wake forest will be because Sam Harmon's off to Notre Dame and you know, that let's be honest, man. I mean, what Sam Harmon did at wake forest was ridiculous. And I think every FSU fan was very happy to hear that he would no longer be, uh, an opponent that they would have to be facing this upcoming season. Um, you know, I, I would place them back down to where they should be. And that's another game where Florida state hurt themselves and screwed themselves to lose that game. Um, you can say the same thing about how the, the way that they played against Clemson and multiple plays where literally if they make one tackle, it changes the game for a touchdown and changes the score, which everyone was a one possession game. Uh, but yeah, I would, or at least going to your question, Jason, I would way rather start off with Boston college because that would be a nasty stretch to start off the season. In my opinion. Yes. The interesting aspect of the schedule, when you look at what used to be the divisions, is Florida State's schedule is now balanced. At least this particular year, they play, it just looks different than it would have because they got four coastal division teams on the schedule where, of course, it was always Miami and somebody else that came up with the rotation. Uh, and I know this is not in order of what the games are going to be, but looking at the the end teams there with Duke, Pitt, Wake. Florida State's definitely better than those teams, more talented than those teams. But yeah, they're they're uh, you know they're capable. Those those aren't going to be easy outs. They're, those are all teams and programs that have good things going. I know Sam Hartman's as as uh, Logan mentions is gone, so that's a major hit to the Wake Forest program. There's not a whole lot of guys walking around that throw 45 or 50 touchdowns a season. Um, so they're, they're a completely different deal. But Duke with Riley Leonard, at quarterback coming back, they, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if Mike Elko is really this good of a coach, but they were a completely different team last year. Yep. They, they only lost one score games. They were competitive against everyone hits on the schedule now it's just you know it's it's a different acc it's it's balanced you know it's it's more unpredictable of who's going to be not unpredictable but it's more of a mixture of teams and you're not seeing the same teams every year i think he's going to put us with boston college uh for that week three that acc owner at boston college and once again and i i know some of our fans are a little cocky saying it doesn't matter any, at any time to me I get that Clemson game over with early in September so that if we lose, and we'll talk as the season goes on, whether Florida State will be Clemson this year and break that history, I would rather get Clemson out of the way probably week four in September so that if we do lose to them, and let's say we come back, we, we, we go to Boston College, then go to Clemson, and say on September 30th, the way the schedule plays out, you know, you could host Virginia Tech, you could host Syracuse, somewhere like that come back off that, get back on the winning streak at that point. Also, let's say we go up to Clemson and, and let's say let's say the schedule plays out and we go to Boston College in week three, two Clemson week four, and we come out, let's say we're four and at that point, we're all in a conversation where we're thinking, okay, 
after that, our schedule plays out with Miami, Syracuse, Wake Forest, Duke, and Pitt. To me, yes, obviously Miami is the most important game at that point because it's the rivalry game. But I think the big, the toughest opponent right now is Duke. Hmm. And that'll that stop Miami fans because you're saying tougher to Miami, but it's not based off last season. I think Duke is a better team as a whole than Miami. Miami has better athletes, has better talent. Duke is a better team right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot, a lot different than what we were thinking going into. Yeah. Well, I wasn't on the Miami train to say that, but um, no, of course not. not <clears> I wasn't on that train, but to see the difference in what a Duke, Duke has made and then what, what Wake Forest will look like next year, it's going to be. A, ni- a nice change, I will say, and, you know, good for Duke, but, you know, Florida State's able to have them at home, so that's a good thing. Um, you know, just looking at some positives out of that Florida State schedule ahead of Monday night's release, which will be at 7 o'clock on the ACC network, which can't wait to see the same commercial every second. I mean, come on, and then after that will be some lacrosse game or something probably. Oh, maybe Duke lacrosse. I mean, that's something that I've been trying to – key down on my schedule to watch during the off season is some Duke lacrosse and whoever the heck else has a lacrosse team followed by the 1000th going of the Bowden dynasty followed by, I can't yeah, keep that on there. I don't know. I can't wait to hear Mark Rick talk. You know, I mean, this, this is what the ACC network brings us. Big 10, get us, please come get us. I'm begging you, 10, please come get us. The big 10 shows the same documentaries Fine, over and whatever. over and over and over too. I haven't seen them. So, so it'll be new to me. It'll be new to me for the first time. Go to and they'll have to produce new documentaries for Florida State. Absolutely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, guys, I'm going to make some soup. While I go make some soup, Logan will sit here and tell you about numbers and weights. This is actually – we've got about 10 minutes left of the show. Logan, since I'm leaving, you should talk about numbers and weights. And, and I'll have them up, up right now. I'd have to get them up. Okay, you know what? Fine. Two, that, 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 that's like a 30 minute segment. That's like Yeah, exactly. Segment. We're not yeah, short changing that. We're not that's throwing that right. in the D block. You are Jason. right. You are right. Mark that's needs those for the cut up videos throughout the week because those are the ones that actually they do the numbers. They do the numbers. Then, then, then let's do this. Logan, next week with Mark Rogers TV of college football and with hopefully a healthy Jason Parker from NBC6, we will have Logan, we will give you a half hour where you can talk about numbers, you can talk about weight, verticals, and the Discord. Just get it all out of the way in a half an hour. Just you, you can do it all. Yeah, after the schedule. How's that sound? For the last oh, five a, minutes like tonight, it. Logan can go on about the Discord, and he can let us know what uh, is on tonight's show yeah, because on. Florida State fans, you got a doubleheader working here every Wednesday. It's a split doubleheader. Right. Is what we've got going here, the voice of college football. And then over at Noel Game Day, what's going on at uh is it at eight? Eight o'clock tonight. Yes, eight o'clock. Internal internal pod, no guests this week. Uh, but we're gonna be ranking the position groups. We okay, have our personal real- rankings from the twenty twenty two season. What do you got there, real- Jason? I'm just looking for my X out button. Bye guys. Yeah, I'll get out. Yeah, get out of there as soon as possible. Um, dear God, Run. get out of here. There's no way it shouldn't be taking you this long. Hold on. I'm you must sorry. be really sick. You must be really sick. I am. Goodbye. Nice night. Okay. Goodbye. Have your soup. And night night. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't think he knows. He I've got the button if he doesn't. Okay. There you go. I was about to say he might just leave Goodness and he just gracious. might have them in the background yes. making a soup. Um, but yeah, we're, we've got our show tonight at eight. We'll be ranking position groups. Um, and then we've got a pretty cool show that we're going to be debuting on February 13th. So in a few weeks, we'll be debuting a new show that will involve a 2013 national champion and the Super Bowl winner, too, played with Tom Brady. We've got a uh, pretty cool one that I'll be on with, something that I've been wanting to do for quite a long while. So if you are football nerds, I think you will like this show, but uh, it will involve guests throughout the series, and we'll run a couple of them throughout the offseason, and then... We'll try to do them weekly whenever the season begins, but been working on this for um, the la- for last month, and I'm I'm pretty whooped. But we we've got some good stuff coming for you guys. So working on that because right now, as you know, Mark, it's pretty bleak. It's pretty boring, at least on the college side of things. So 
want to get something before spring starts picking up. And so I think this will be some really cool off season content on our YouTube account on null game day. So well, looking forward to that. It's kind of that time to do all the way too early, this and that, and do all the rankings and rank yep. the positions. And I'm going to rank the coaches here coming up pretty soon. And so we're, we'll see where Mike Norvell ranks here in the voice of college football rankings, but did a heck of a job, of course, last season. So we'll see where we place him, but those coaches rankings are coming and we're going to do a one through one thirty one rankings from 2022. We do our top 25. That actually makes sense every week, but end of the season, I've been a bit delayed everyone. So I apologize, yeah. but we'll knock out the one through one thirty one here in the next couple of days. Absolutely. I'd love and, to do uh, like a, sorry, Mark, but I'd love to do a thing with you on, <clears throat> and maybe even some of the other, I don't know, I'm trying to think some of the other ACC teams or, you know, we've, you know, we've always done stuff with Miami or, or Florida, but maybe some ACC teams are definitely like a Clem. Maybe there's the big dogs though. Clemson. Um, I guess you could. <laughs> no, I know. I want. I'm, You're looking for the the other big yeah. dogs. I'm looking for the big dog. I was gonna. I was. I was trying to throw in mine, but I'm trying to bring in like true threats to what would you know your your big names and the ACC that are going to be competitive to get to that ACC championship. Since now it is a more open realm of things for teams competing to be in that top two by the end of the season. So, um, you know, maybe I'll come up with some ideas and throw you some DMs, Mark and do some things this off season to give everybody some content. Cause I know always, you like giving some always content. looking, always looking to collaborate. And then uh, Logan and I will have to get together before spring practice and deliver our yearly position previews. Yeah. That spring game, I'm expecting it to be around April 15th. So we've got some good time there. Um, I, I, you know, that is going to be very heavy because like we were just talking about earlier, a lot of returning players, but also got some new talent involved and transfers. So that, you know, those videos are always big. And it's also just good for me to put in my brain about some new names, new numbers, everything coming in. So, uh, you know, we'll definitely get together and start getting those videos put together because we kind of got already our good feel of all of the early enrollees and the impact that they'll make in the spring and then we'll talk returning players some of the guys that left like we we're talking about Ontario Wilson his speed no longer being with the offense but who could replace that speed all that kind of discussion you and I usually do every year so it'll be good to jump back into that and it's just a non-stop wheel market just never Never stops. You get a few weeks like January, maybe early January, but after that, it's we're already kind of looking ahead to spring. That that's just you. You're a you're a football fanatic, and I am too. So we're kind of more of God. I, don't know, I want something to be able to talk about a little bit more relevant, and spring usually does bring that. And so we'll see. Folks will remind you that while we've got like eighty on the line right now and we've had some nice shows the last few weeks with about 150 160 on the line that uh was around 40 for most of the show so what that tells me is that uh, most of you weren't we're not here for most of the conversation so what you do is you just wait for the video to post which should happen pretty much immediately right after the show so catch what you missed uh with logan jason and myself here at the voice of college football eight o'clock eastern time get on over to Noel game day right here on youtube check out um, uh, the guys chopping it up on uh, Florida State football. Appreciate you, Mark, as always. Thanks yeah, for having thank me you on. so much, Logan. Appreciate you being here. Know you've got a million things going on, and so thanks for making time here. It's every Wednesday, folks, 6 p.m. Eastern time, talking Florida State football. Bring some friends with you next time, and again, eight o'clock tonight. So you got an hour to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Make it on back eight o'clock Eastern time. Noel game day, right here on YouTube. Thanks, Logan. Appreciate you. Have a uh, great rest of your week. Yeah, appreciate you, Mark. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. We'll see you guys next week on Wednesday at 6 p.m.